Hey guys, December 15th, middle of middle of the month here. And my sister's birthday, so I texted her and said happy birthday, so I'm not in any hot water here. Uh, today's video isn't Richie Brothers. It's high styling and fashion. If you wonder why you're not attracting all the lady folks, maybe you got the wrong belt buckles. So I'll show you a few that I've got here. This I don't know the age of some of them, but like this is the old one. That's a pointy cab, 225. So that would be Dayton as far back as like 1970, shoot, two, three, one, right in there, almost 50 years ago. And some of them have a bit of writing on the back, but hard to see. So there's one, another one. I used to wear some of these, but. A lot of them, these, this style one I got in the 90s, a bunch of them. Can't remember where, but I can remember everything. Probably at the, like, Workwear World or Mark's Work Warehouse, one of those places. Siska U Buckle Company. There's real small writing in there. I guess it's a log truck. It's American made. Sure looks like a Freightliner. Not a number one choice for a wood wagon. Can't tell if that's an international. Looks like an international. The grapple skitter going on there. And my hands are dirty. I just come out of the shop and sanding and fixing and painting and cleaning and working on metal. So I just figured I'd do this here at 3:30 in the afternoon before it gets any darker. This one's just stamped. An old cable dozer. A reminisce of working for a living back in the day. So back when quitting time was probably a little bit more looked forward to. You're sitting out there getting rained on all day or beat on with the sun in the summer. That have a Johnson bar, standard transmission, a hand clutch. Those would have been the days. I'm glad I'm a bit younger than that. Eighteen, I guess they did make a 508 not a lot of them around not a lot of people ever heard of them but. they were a good looking piece just straight bullish lines on them That's just timeless. The old D9H with the cantilever cab. Nineteen seventy-five. who couldn't sit there and just stare at a D9 all day. Well, this is the same as that one. Look at that. A few minutes in, we're already running repeats. Of course, someone will ask for it. Hey, you got two. Can I buy one? I was like, like, well, I don't have two. I just I have a backup one. Uh, this one I used to wear all the time back in the day. I like this one. It had so much going on. It had standing timber, the 
logger, the faller, this chainsaw, the crosscut saw, double bitted axe, a skidder decking up finished logs, mountain in the background. It's a busy piece. I brought a flashlight out in case I was going to illuminate the back, but I realized I only got three hands or six hands, so I can't hold any more things. This is a real light one. Just stamped brass. Two-piece, though. It says... I know we haven't got to the front. Don't, don't get mad at how I present them. It says something. It says, Aid in Italy. Oh, this is P and H. Something in Harnish Fager, Har Harnish Flager. P and H. I bet you'd have to buy some big dollar piece to have got that. It's not like they make little backhoes and bobcats. Those guys make like the big 4100s and monster gear. This one's a little bit in its own league. What does it say? Taiwan, which is China. Which is why I'm not saying anything else. Kind of a European take with the hinged pin there. Although anybody that knows anything about anything that needs to be known would know that there was no such thing as a one hinged. In Belgium, some of the old 225s did have a, a two piece adjustable one where they could lock the whole boom forward and back, but the one piece hinge does not seem to make sense. I guess it's just a belt buckle. Don't know what it would be. The cat, the cab almost looks a little bit 225 cat. The louvers there, maybe say Inslee or something from back in the 70s. And another one. Logger. course try and tell a reasonable person that i guess that's why it's put in small print so nobody to read nobody to appreciate it if it was even on a banner and repeat again of the same one without the without those little oven cooked glass beads plastic beads i'm not a motor grader guy but I'm sure I've driven on roads that have had motor graders work on them or build them. So that's, that's my involvement. Oh, it's a limited edition. 509 out of a thousand. It's right in the middle. Probably very little value. Oh, here's a nice one. And I know this is early because there's no center top carrier roller. Let's see what the back says. And we'll admire the front. Nineteen eighty two. Nineteen eighty two. Let's guess what that is. It's too big for an 8L. The D9L had come in then. It came in in 1981. The D10, I believe, came in in 74. Some say 77, but I know it was 74, the original one. That's a 10. 
that's a D10. And it has the little hydraulic lines to unpin the ripper and set the heights. There's a little hydraulic cylinder in there. You click a valve or a lever and that opens up. Set the ripper down on the ground and readjust for a different height. And this is a tiny little one. This is Laterno, so this is probably the oldest. Doesn't doesn't say anything on the nothing on the back. D. D again. That is vintage. And there's a name on the bottom of it. Edward. Edward Casson, C A S S O N. He's certified to run one of those. And my very last one. This one I've had since uh, grade one, 1977 or 8, somewhere around in there. My parents went down to Washington. We're from BC. They went down to Washington somewhere. And my dad brought me back that. It needs to be. I've shined it up a few times over the decades. I've worn it a zillion times. Wore it through elementary school on and off. Wore it in high school. Always got laughed at and poked fun of a little bit. But it was to set the pace for things to come. It's made an impression on me. All right. Thanks for watching. I don't know what we'll be looking at next time, but I figured somebody might enjoy this, so and it took up some time. Okay, later.